Okay, so here's the agenda um, for this time around. Uh, I'll go over some project highlights, uh, community outreach, and then we'll go over the uh, Yocto at our virtual uh, Embedded Linux conference here. Uh, so project uh, release updates, uh, 2.3.2, uh, which is the one that we're working on uh, at the moment, uh, should be releasing soon, sometime in October here in the next couple of weeks. Um, we have some stats on how many changes have gone in and the number of developers. Uh, our LTS, which is the 3.1 release, um, it's the third dot release that we've done. And so far we've almost hit 470 changes. Um, 121 developers participated in this LTS round. And then the last, re uh, last release here we have of Zeus. Uh, it's now in community support, uh, happened a couple of weeks ago. And there's some stats regarding that. Uh, some project updates. Uh, we have some new silver members for the Octo project. Uh, Foundry IO uh, joined this year. And also uh, San Juan Linux. The uh, project is, hello? hello? Oh. Um, the Octo project is turning uh, 10 years old this year. Uh, the big thing that we've done so far is uh, we've migrated to Sphinx. Uh, special thanks to Nicola, uh, Richard, and Quentin uh, for participating in a lot of changes to do that. Uh, we also started a new website for the docs. Uh, that's There's a URL at the bottom there, at docs at uh, yakaproject.org. Uh, some additional highlights is we've done a lot of uh, uh, auto builder stabilization. Um, we've had several MIPS uh, corrections to make MIPS QMU much uh, stabler. And uh, special thanks to Cisco. Um, we've done some pseudo changes and we will be uh, reinstating the SWAT team here shortly. Uh, uh, thanks to the Octo project members for stepping up and getting people participating in that. Uh, also, there's a few more thank yous that we need to do. Uh, uh, Stephen Jolly, he's been running uh, the bug triage, the weekly engineering meeting and the monthly engineering meetings. Uh, he's been, you know, he, he's been volunteering his time for as a PM. Um, Special thanks for uh, Trevor Warner for doing uh, uh, sending out the weekly minutes for the engineering meetings. Uh, I'd like to thank Randy McLeod for assisting the bug triage and Trevor Gamblin for sending out uh, the bug triage ARs and minutes. So as far as community outreach, uh, we do have some uh, virtual meetings that we hold. Uh, there's a link there where uh, you can get all the information about uh, signing in, uh, the Zoom information. Uh, we do have a weekly bug triage. Uh, it happens on Thursdays. And if you want to challenge yourself, uh, we encourage you to join uh, and see what, what uh, tasks you can pick up. We also do have a, a nearly weekly engineering sync uh, that's it's where we talk about the internal workings of the project, uh, build issues, things uh, to help us through the next week of the Octo project. Um, we also have a, uh, did I, oh, I didn't, hang on. We do have a monthly technical call. Uh, if you wanna help shape the release, um, that's where we talk about uh, the, what's coming up in the next release. The th we're doing the 3.3 planning now. Uh, that I have a, there's a Google doc that I can share with you. That's also included in the uh, status minutes, uh, status minutes that uh, Stephen Jolly sends out every week. Um, so you can see what's being put in or what you can maybe help 
uh, in the next release. We also have a bi-monthly advocacy meeting. Uh, Open Embedded has a, I believe it's a monthly happy hour. They have a schedule for that. And I think there's a monthly TSC meeting. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of the schedule of that. Uh, some other outreach uh, is uh, we do have a Twitch uh, slash Yocto YouTube put together that uh, Joseph has been doing for, I'm guessing up to maybe almost two years now. Um, there's some stats. We have up to 5,000 subscribers, 8,000 uh, views per month, um, almost over 800 hours were watched. So uh, that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, and also, if you want to, we have some links here. If you want to follow us on various other uh, social media, uh, we have LinkedIn, Twitch, YouTube, and uh, there's the Octo community link at the bottom. So at Embedded Linux Conference this year, we have, uh, so far, we have already had two um, uh, events. One is, uh, that already happened earlier today. And the last one for today that I know of is this event. Uh, for tomorrow, um, there's the best practices scheduled at uh, 18, uh, 1300 uh, GMT. And then on Wednesday, uh, we have a couple more uh, rounded out with the uh, first, uh, the Octo Project's first decade with uh, Jeffrey and uh, Nicholas. Uh, posting that so that that'll end on um, Wednesday. We are also having a, a summit this year. It's at the end of the this week on Thursday and Friday. It's not too late to register. So there's a link there you can register uh, and sign up for those two sign up for the uh, summit. Uh, if you want to look at the schedule, I included the schedule for the summit. Uh, there's effectively two beginner sessions in parallel with uh, the 20 intermediate sessions. And there's also going to be a, a hack room uh, with three hands on. And let's see. And now this is where we turn everything over to the community to ask questions. Okay, so I've been mon monitoring the chat. So it looks like uh, there are a few issues. We, people can join through the event web interface or through Zoom. Uh, so I think I would recommend everyone to join on Zoom just to make sure. I think there is some sort of integration between the, applica the web application and Zoom, but it looks like Zoom works better for most people. So we are definitely on Zoom. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, if you have any issues, just try to click on the chat button and join the Zoom link. So, um, yeah, so that's where it's difficult. The first question, uh, the first microphone, uh, that's always the same. Um, yeah, uh, the rule is that try to, I mean, you should be able to unmute as well, but in general, if there are many questions, maybe it's better to just ask the questions. Uh, Yes, I can see that, Dave. Um, um, we, you can ask the questions on chat and then we'll try to answer the questions or, or ask anyone. So I see that we have many uh, key people, key developers from the project. We have Richard with us. So hopefully we can take any questions today. So anyone wants to volunteer with a So, uh, can you hear me? Yes, that works fine. Yes, I would be interested to know how you guys are dealing with NFS root in Yocto. So, uh, some other PSP build systems like PTX systems that I use, they have an NFS root mechanism that just extracts a directory for you that's called root, where your rootfs is, and it patches the um, permissions for the files and folders. So, I can just point the kernel at it and use it. But with Yocto, what I have been using so far is that I extract a tarball. And then if I run into SUID problems, I have to fix them up manually. 
So I wonder, does anyone have a ready script that does it maybe with using iNotify or something? Or how do you guys do NFS route? That would be something I would be interested to hear what you guys do. OK, so I do not have the answer, but I'm hoping uh, maybe somebody wants to speak up. Richard, I see your unmute, but I don't. Yeah, I, I can if nobody else wants to go. Um, the project actually has its own inbuilt um, NFS server, so a uh, user space NFS server, which runs under sudo to handle the permissions. So um, I can't remember the names of the script offhand, but there is some kind. If you look in the scripts directory, there's something involving NFS root in there, and that allows you to take a rootfs tarball, extract it and um, then use it as an NFS um, as an NFS server, which you can then point a, a given kernel and piece of hardware at. So that technology should be there. Um, it's probably not as well documented as it should be, but if you have a look in that directory, you should see some scripts that um, will let you do that. And I'm, I'm fairly sure that it's actually tested in one of the, in the self-tests as well. Okay, so I can just rerun the build and it will automatically put the newest files at the correct location. Um, that, that's, that technology will let you host it and get the permissions right and everything else, but you probably will have to re-extract re the rootfs after you finish the build. I don't think it dynamically updates in place at this point. That's something which would be okay. quite nice to add, but I don't think it automatically does that at the moment. Okay. So I use it uh, often, uh, use it a lot so that I can just develop on some software and just build in my BSP and so rootfs is updated. It would be great to have this in Yocto to out of the box. I've... It, it should be as simple as adding some kind of rsync or something like that between the two directories, run under sudo um, at the end of the image task or something. There's, there's probably options there, but like I said, it's, it's just not done quite like that today. Okay, I'm not sure how uh, well that would work that you just replace too many files at once while the kernel is running off it. But I'm not sure about the limitations. I'm just wondering if there is something. I will try that script you have mentioned and see if that suffices. I've uh, done that with my in-house boards where I will uh, upload onto an NFS server and just have my uh, board uh, auto mount that when U boot comes up. So I'm, every time I build, I, I, it, I'm setting up a new copy of the root file system to my NFS server. You just do it that way. I wrote a class for it. It's in a, a meta lab. You can, uh, I haven't registered it on the uh, layer index yet, but uh, at, I, it's what I use for at home. If you have a different okay. system. So I, it it's kind of it's kind of a crude way of doing it, but it, it's a way around it. I can probably should share. I should probably register it so people can use like play around with it. I more generally would I mean, if you need to, I mean, we we'll try to take question and answers today. If you need to follow up, and if you talk, if we talked about something at the bar, and you want to follow up. Uh, there are many ways. Uh, I mean, the Yocto project mailing list would probably be something. Now that you've talked about this thing, you can send an email and hopefully I mean, or others can follow up on the mailing list. Uh, and then during the conference, uh, most of the people and most of the project uh, developers, uh, uh, we've decided to use a Slack instance. So if you go on the Yocto booth uh, on the ELC main page, you will find a link to actually join uh, the uh, conference channel that we decided to use. Um, all week. Uh, so you can find us there and ask questions, more questions or need to follow up on anything. Uh, can I get the voice, Nicole? Yes. Well done. Uh, thanks. Uh, I just uh, arrived literally on the slide uh, after Armin misspelled my name. So I've been told you owe me a beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, more serious notes. Um, we've had some discussions on localized content, uh, like uh, German, Italian, uh, Chinese, India, uh, things like that. So uh, it would be awesome if we can, could get some input by our user base um, 
if there is a need for that, what are the formats that are most uh, interesting for the specific regions. For example, I've been told that India almost has no use for written documentation. It's all videos that they consume. Uh, on the other hand, in uh, Scandinavia, it seems to be only written documentation. So uh, where should we be heading? That would be really interesting for us. Yeah, so what Joseph just mentioned, it's a discussion that the uh, York to advocacy team is having these days. Uh, I think it started a few weeks ago. Uh, what we realize is we have a few people who actually produce uh, content in like, uh, I mean, Italian, um, Japanese, I mean, we have different languages and that's something the project itself, I mean, we had not done, I mean, the, the documentation and everything we write is mostly in English. Uh, but we are looking at how we can actually explore I mean, how the community can actually grow uh, and just produce languages. I mean, different, la I mean, uh, materials, documentation into different languages. I think, Joseph, you said that you are ready to do that in German, which is good. And, uh, but yeah, so if we find more people that want to help with different languages, and then the next question is what kind of content we need to create for different languages. So that's mostly a question for non English speakers, if you want to explain to us, I mean, what you think would be useful for developers around you in your own country, that would actually be a very nice input for us. Anybody wants to take a peek? Okay. It seems so, we've scared everybody. Or maybe we should ask the question in different languages, maybe. <laughs> maybe. So there is a comment from uh, Leon. Yeah, so we agree. I mean, like we talked about translating the whole documentation in various languages, that would be way too much work. Uh, but the idea would be to create content that, I mean, trainings or things that can help, I mean, spread uh, the Octo project in various countries. And in the end, I mean, yes, I mean, the whole documentation, it would be very difficult to get that in but anything else than English. Yeah, um, one has to say that this should probably more serve as entry level documentation or entry level material to get people up to speed. Because um, if, if we would really translate the, the higher level documentation, it would it would just be uh, like um, ambiguous in the end. The one refers to the German one, another one refers to the English one, and uh, that that's probably not really good. If we have when when it really comes to the to the to the core material, having stuff in English is the one single source of truth, and that that should not be uh, discussed. Actually, I'm really talking about stuff that that gets newcomers in. How we get people interested that are not like starting out with a mega manual. Okay, anyway, the key thing here is to let everybody know that this is a topic that we are concerned about. And uh, if you take that further with your friends, colleagues, and want to yep. get back to Joseph or myself, and if you have any spe specific need in any specific language, yes, uh, Joseph and myself would like to make some progress there. So, and again, I mean, it's something that will, if someone steps up and wants to help, that we will help them. But it's not something we will be able to do ourselves, obviously. So, if you need anything, if you want to get back to us or talk about that, yeah, just find Joseph or find me. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I agree with your comment, Leon. Uh, some conferences are more local than others, and that would be so. Then we would need speakers at these conferences. No, obviously, definitely. Okay, so maybe while we wait uh, for the next question, um, Armin talked about the Yocto Summit and in the introduction. So it's a uh, it's a big event for us. Uh, we had uh, close to 200 people last time just joining us for like one day. Uh, this time we do a two day event uh, with uh, many different, I mean, a few different tracks, including trainings for beginners, people who want to learn uh, 
about the project and get started with the project. So we definitely we really hope that this is going to be a, a good and successful event. It's on Thursday and Friday uh, this week after this conference, and it's still uh, possible to join. So if you want to join or if you have any specific issues, uh, you can find me or David, uh, David Rena, who is also organizing the event and uh, we'll, we'll help you and guide you for that. Do we know how many people are signed up for the summit so far? Uh, last time I <laughs> check, I think it was a week ago and uh, it was more than 50. But I'm not sure. I mean, I just give a number, but I'm not even sure about the number. Okay, so again, uh, still hopefully we'll get more questions. Uh, since we have, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, Richard, uh, it's almost a new release, um, 3.2. Uh, do you want to talk about what's coming in 3.2? And hopefully that will make people ask more questions. Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, it depends what people are going to contribute, to be perfectly honest. Well, 3.2 um, is way too late to contribute. Oh, so, sorry. Right, right, right. I thought you were talking about 3.3. 3. Um, yeah, 3.2. 3, 3, um, well, as you said, I mean, one of the biggest things is the documentation transition over the Sphinx. Um, I kind of see 3.2 as a bit of a more of a stabilization, um, but we are we have managed to update a lot of the recipes to be probably as close to upstream as we've we've been in any of our releases, which I think is good. Our patch overhead and sort of, uh, you know, the number of patches we're carrying to various bits of software is slowly shrinking over time, which I think is very positive. Um, and there's, there's a lot of sort of smaller changes in there, um, such as the pseudo fixes, which I think are going to really help with some of the, the, um, the rare but important sort of um, corruption cases and so on that we've, we've noticed and we need to fix. So yeah, it's uh, in case people are wondering, 3.2, uh, we did have the RC1 build, which has just come out of QA. Unfortunately, one of the patches that I, I broke one of my rules and took a patch at the last minute, it's I've broken things. So we're probably gonna have an RC2 that will go into QA and then hopefully we might get the release out by the end of the week, we'll see. But that just gives people an idea of what's going on with the release. Was there anything specific you wanted to talk about, Nico? No, no, just, I mean, no. I think it's good for, okay. I mean, most of the core people know what's going on, but I think we, we have more people here today, so it's good to know. So 3.2 is coming, and uh, as expected, and uh, that's, that's good news. Well, so, uh, shall I say something again? As you said, the, the crowd is too shy. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, one topic we had last year in Lyon was um, the question if we are, uh, we are doing good on diversity. So, if we are still all uh, white, angry metalheads in our 30s or some in our 40s uh, by now, or if we are like, uh, how we can get people from, from uh, other backgrounds in and how are we doing there? Uh, is, is there some prog uh, progress on it? Um, yeah, what's, what's the feedback? I, I know that some people uh, got in touch with that over Outreachy and uh, at least for, for Tim and me, I can, uh, I can say we, we are trying as far as as much as we can to to help those and um yeah get them up to speed but yeah are there others who feel like they need some assistance or yeah please step up and uh let us know so i, I mean i think it's a very important thing that you describe and it's definitely uh, an issue for I mean, this community and I encourage everyone to attend uh, the event on Wednesday about the 10 years anniversary of the project. And yeah, you might realize that this is not, that this is an issue for the project when you see, I mean, the pictures and the people who have contributed. 
So, and we are in a very special place in the embedded Linux space itself. Uh, so we've tried in the past uh, to do things and we've worked in the past with, for example, the outreach organization that makes like, uh, I mean, internships to try to reach out to people who usually, I mean, it might be actually difficult to, to reach out to. Uh, so what we are trying, and again, I mean, it takes I mean, a lot of energy from people from this community to actually go and, 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 and do these things. And I'm very happy that this year uh, we have been able to propose two different internships uh, to the outreach. So there, I mean, actually, this is October. So by the end of this week, uh, we will do, uh, we will close the selections of interns for two different topics for the Octo project. So it's only possible because we have people in our community who just step up and just want to do that. And there is a bit of finance side of things, but that's usually easier to get the finance side of things and actually, I mean, find people who really want to step up. So we definitely, what we've seen that, I mean, as soon as we open up the outreach, like a few weeks ago, we've seen, I mean, a few new, um, a new people joining and with different background and uh, they just were very interested to actually start learning about the project. So we already saw some positive um, things about that and we really hope to get more. Uh, we will uh, support and we will help uh, anyone in our community who wants to help us with these kind of issues. Yeah, so, you know, Trevor Warner has been trying to get Google Summer of Code going and, you know, we just haven't quite gotten there yet. I was really glad to see us get the two um, outreachy internships in there. Um, you know, it's, it's always hard to get uh, connected with the right people and the com communication and the whole process of onboarding the applicants is tricky. Um, but it's still just very exciting, right? And, you know, Many of you realize I, I taught in university for five years, and if you count all the time I was in grad school, it's way more than that that I was teaching. So it's a very natural for me to be a mentor, and and I love doing it. So you know I, I'm I'm putting my money where, where my mouth is, or you know walking the walk in that regard, the best I can. Yeah, thanks for that. And I mean, even though I mean. The Octo, I mean, looks like something which is deeply embedded. Uh, it's actually fairly straightforward to get started for anyone. Uh, like when we talk to interns that, I mean, for the outreach, we let them know that they I mean, don't even need like a super powerful machine. We can provide all the hardware for that. We can provide, I mean, cloud instances and we can help anyone. I mean, who sometimes that might be I mean, like a, a barrier to entry. So we will do anything we can to help. Uh, again, uh, just try to reach out to, to more uh, more people than what we have today. But I, I think it's important to sort of stress that this all comes down to community support of these initiatives, because we have tried to get these going. We are short on mentors. And there's a tangential topic, which is the um, inclusive language. And I think that the next release is going to see, we're going to need to make some changes. And those changes are going to be relatively disruptive, because we do have terminology in there that probably, you know, shouldn't really be in there. Um, but we have put some proposals out about how we should go about that and put a roadmap there. Um, everybody, I think, is in, you know, is in agreement we need to go and fix this, but actually people stepping up to do the work has turned out to be a little bit tricky so far. Now, I have deferred it to 3.3 because it was getting too late in 3.2 to take invasive changes like that. We do need to address it in 3.3, but we are going to need help. Um, and it, I'm hoping some of the people here, um, you know, Yes, there's the, the people, the contributors we all know, but I'm also hoping we may get some new contributors who can help us with, uh, with some of this uh, work. Yeah, that's right. In fact, there are even changes that can be done by, I mean, people who are not very familiar with the project. I mean, especially with the inclusive language. I mean, there are technical change with changes we want to make. There are things to review, I mean, help with the documentation. And so, I mean, you don't need to know everything about the project to get started with that. So that might actually be a good, way to just get started with us yeah and there's there's examples like you know toaster and the layer index and things like that that are in django right and that's a completely different skill set completely different group of people that would would likely be interested in working on that and that's very different than the normal core folks in our traditional usage it's worth highlighting as well that the documentation transition over to Sphinx does mean that the documentation is now much more accessible 
um, for people to make changes to because he, the, the doc book syntax was pretty horrible to try and work with. The manuals are much easier to, to read and to make changes to and, and, and to review as well, to be honest. So I think this, there are sections of the manuals that are dating um, and need improvement or there's just things that are undocumented and so on. Um, but I think you know, that's another area where new contributors can very easily make a big difference to the project as well. Yeah, you know, Richard, I think that's like a very strong point. And once again, thanks to Nico for such a heavy lift on that. But, um, you know, I, I was reading through something in the manual just the other day and realized, oh, there's a link missing here. And, you know, the, the barrier, is, so I was very comfortable with DocBook. That wasn't really the problem, but to actually build it and test it was non-trivial. So the barrier to actually make changes is very low. It's it's about the same as just making a change to some recipe now. It's really, really nice, much different situation. I think that's one of the best things we did this year. Yeah, that's correct. The change and and that's that's right. I mean the building and rebuilding the whole documentation and locally testing the documentation is now just become like a, a one liner and it just takes like a, a minute. So that's that's a very big change, yes. We just need a recipe now. <laughs> to build that new image. You could build that with speed bake, yes. Yeah. Okay, so while we, I mean, the thing that we are waiting happened. So we have a few questions now. Um, so there was a question earlier. So somebody, I'm just going to quickly repeat the question or the sentence. Somebody walk, uh, watch uh, Chris talk about comparing Yocto and Debian. The big difference is in developer experience for application, application developers having a binary package feed. So where are we with Yocto in terms of uh, consistent experience for package feed for creating this tool? So I just uh, used what we have now this week in, in my own development cycle uh, based on a talk that Stefano uh, Chitola did back in 2018 at a Yocto Project Dev Day. So. The problem is that what people mean when they say package feed isn't, hey, can you use that? Because we've had that forever, right? We've had the ability to put a package manager in and build your own package feed and use that. The problem is having a publicly available package feed. And there's a lot behind that. Um, you know, there's all the maintenance of it, but there's also liability once you start actually producing binaries and making them publicly available. So it's, it's just not a not a simple solution, um, but people are definitely working on that. I, I think that, you know, in the past, it would have been very difficult to do something like a binary package feed. Um, you know, we've seen distros produce them. We went through phases where it, there were challenges in that. I think the, the situation has improved, particularly now we have hash equivalents, we have reproducible builds and so on. Um, I think that will help tremendously um, with things like the auto increment DPR values and things like that. So I think it's probably um, a time when somebody could, you, you probably need a team of people to do it. This is a challenge. So if there is a group of people, you know, fellow co-travelers who would be interested in doing that and can, can define the parameters of that binary feed, then I think that the time is ripe to do it. Uh, but it, it's going to need people to step up and do it because the current sort of contributors working on the core of the project don't have the bandwidth for that. So it's, it's a step beyond what we have today. Um, I think the, the technology is there now. It, it's just going to need the people to drive it. This is, this is Walt. I was the one who um, typed in the question. Um, just to be clear, I'm talking about a package feed, not of the Yocto project packages themselves, but now that I, once I've built my di distribution based on Yocto project, um, the downstream feed from there. So are you talking about Walt hosting your own like yeah, so having we, AGL host their own? Yeah, so AGL, AGL wants to have 
a, a package feed based on a Linux, just based on a Yakko distribution. And does like, I think, I think That's, it's similar to what Richard just said. There's a lot, there's work that needs to be done and somebody needs to step up and do it. I was just wondering if there's any, um, any, anything more in flight from, uh, from Yakko, Yakko project itself. We've been talking about it, but you know, what you're talking about for AGL is absolutely doable, right? Because you've already got a CI infrastructure. So essentially once you've done your build, you would need to run the um, package index task and then basically run, you know, R sync to R sync that um, your, you know, deploy IPK or deploy RPM or whatever package manager you're using directory to your um, web server, the, the, the thing that's actually going to serve up the package feed. So I just did that a couple days ago. So we, we can talk about this offline or whatever, but. Yeah, that would um, be, yeah, we, we should have, Jan Simon says he's having, he's having trouble joining, but um, yeah, it would be a good discussion to have with, uh, with Jan Simon as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I'm happy to go over that with you guys in, in some detail because I just did it again for, oh, the okay. first, for the first time in a while. It, okay. it's, it's really easy to get that first package feed. It's maintaining it where I think there's a little bit of um, oh, yeah. exploration that's going to be needed. And I think, but I think the tools are all there. I know people like Mark Hatley did try this, um, integrating hash equivalents and PR service and things like that. It's not entirely perfect, but it's not far off either. Um, I don't see huge issues particularly now we've got the reproducibility pieces and the hash equivalents, which means that this, the feed stability is there. You're not having everything change every, you know, every time you rebuild or anything. So it's close. They just need somebody to actually go and try it and have a little bit of time to fix the inevitable uh, bugs that you're gonna get when you try something new. Yeah, and it's something like, you know, in the Fedora project, you've got the, the nightly compose that has to happen, which takes, you know, all the builds that come out of Koji and puts it into the various spins and images and so on. And that extra, those extra steps that make the thing consistently and robustly and reliably uh, up, upgradable and downloadable, that, those are the extra steps that we haven't, as a community, been doing because we don't have that infrastructure. Um, so th those are some of the places where AGL would probably find some stumbling blocks but it's not insurmountable and the the infrastructure or the, sorry the code the metadata the, the the tools are much better off than they have been in in a long time and in, in what I, in my recollection they're very stable right now okay and I, and I would give a, a mention, you asked about new features in this release, that interaction between hash equivalents and PR service is something that was fixed by Mark Hadley in the release. Um, so that's something new in 3.2 that will definitely help with this because it, it was being used for, for what you've just described, basically. Yeah, the problem for us then is that we've chosen to stick with the LTS release. So we need to think about how, how we can make use of that. Right, and the changes were fairly invasive, from what I remember. So we, we, yeah. But it's something we should, we definitely need to look into and figure out whether there is a, um, you know, an extra layer on top or something that this could be done in, or whether the changes, because they've stabilized the master, would become suitable, or what our general plan is going to be for that kind of thing. Right. Okay, so that was another question earlier, and I'm just trying to. F look at the backlog. Um, is there any anything that blocks lib setcon to actually uh, merge into OE core now that the pseudo issue has have been fixed? Richard, that might again be for you. Um, the pseudo issue was fixed by just aborting and not running anything to do with setcomp. We just disable it. So I think they're tangential issues. I'm not. I'm not sure why we, why what we'd need, be needing to import that for. Uh, Cam already uh, answered that, so there's uh, discussion on that patch ongoing. Someone needs okay. to fix that. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it uh, would be interesting for systemd because the systemd syscall filtering depends on that.
Okay, so trying to move to the next question. Um, someone is asking, uh, Bill is asking about RPM versus OPKG versus DEB. He's reporting that DEB is probably less used, but he wanted to get a feeling about uh, how people use RPM versus OPKG and reports that OPKG might actually need a bit of help. So the, the main uh, project is mostly using our, um, DNF and RPM packaging. So those are that's the most tested. IPK and OPK or O package are tested quite a bit as well. Debian's just currently the least tested and we really just need pe people that are using it and want to use it to be involved and, and help us maintain it. Um, you know, it's, it, it, we, we definitely have limited numbers of people involved in, in fixing things, right? And so people that want to use something else, we just really need you to you know, come join us and get involved. I would say I've never had any issues with either RPM or O package, certainly within the last few years. So those are the two I would recommend people use. I think the question was whether there's a percentage. And I don't think any of us have a percentage as to what the split is. I know both of those are used. We've got at least two open bugs against the Debian backend for missing functionality. Um, and we're struggling to find people to add it because we're not, we don't seem to have the user base there. Uh, but what the percentage is between the two, I don't know. I, it, this is one of the problems with open source. You, you can't tell exactly who your users are. You can just go by bug reports. And we know that O package and RPM are both used. Okay, so there is a question uh, about the industrial grade Linux asking an apertis. So I'm assuming this is a follow up based on the earlier keynote or presentation. Has there been any discussion at the, with the LF about that? Because it looks like um, that uh, Yocto could actually solve that much better. So I guess it's a very open question. Um, anybody? So where I, I don't think there has been any discussion, but I could be wrong. Richard, aware of any discussion with the industry? I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of any specific discussion on that topic. Um, I, I know some of the people involved are aware of Yocto project, so you would hope that you know, it, it would be something that's being considered in that space. It's pro if people are, if anybody is involved with that, you know, talk to me and um, yeah, we, sh we should at least try and figure out a way of connecting to that community to make sure that we're at least being considered. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. I'm not aware of any discussions right now. Okay, just looking at the time, uh, I think we have five more minutes. Um, just trying to find if there are any questions. So there are a bunch of discussion about OPK, uh, OPK versus RPM, and I don't see much questions there. I don't see any other questions. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. Okay, so one last, one last or last two questions, maybe. LTS status, maybe we could, should we talk about that? It's been six months now, maybe, that we've launched and talked a lot about uh, LTS. LTS has been a, a key request uh, to the Proyocto project members for quite some time. And uh, the project was very happy to announce that it managed to figure out how to deal with LTS and do LTS. So has anybody using LTS? Has LTS changed the way you use or rely on the Yocto project? Do you have any feedback on what we could do better or differently? 
So I'll say internally that um, it was much easier to convince all the teams working on different platforms to switch to LTS. That was like an easier sell than we've ever had for getting a team to upgrade to a newer Yocto project version. So I hope that's happening everywhere. I have heard of that from a few places as well. Um, that's definitely, I mean, one of the hope that we had, reducing the number of key releases that people rely on, just like by having one big LTS. I mean, of course, we still want people, encourage people to use the latest release. But generally, these people should be able to upgrade more often than the others. So hopefully, they should be able to keep up with the pace of the release. Yeah, I'm going to echo um, starting up a new project and it, it literally helped adoption with it, having, having LTS there. One thing I'll say is that if people are finding the LTS useful, please do give us the feedback if you can to show who's using it, why it's important, because the, the project needs to be able to fund these things and to show, to be able to fund them, we need to show that they're actually being used and they're useful to people. So it's kind of like a, we can end up in a catch 22 situation where everybody's really liking it, but it's working well and everybody stays silent. So if you can give us feedback and show us that these things are being used, that does help us in, you know, then try figuring out to be able to try and fund them and keep them going. So I just want to make sure that people are aware of that as well, that there is a connection there. And, showing that these things are being used is important to help us make sure that they keep going. Because obviously the members talk to each other about it, but if we don't hear it from other users in the field, then we really don't know. There was a question about the length of uh, the LTS policy. It's uh, two years right now. So what's the, no, that was the question, right? That's the length, yeah. So the length is two years. Again, I mean, everybody should realize that there is, there are finance things associated with LTS. I mean, it's more work and it's dedicated uh, engineering work. So at the moment, uh, we have secured the funding to do one LTS, which means that when we start the next one, after two years, we will have to decide. I mean, I mean, we won't be able to do two LTS. The hope is that uh, we'll see. I mean, we assess the situation when it's time to get there. And if LTS is a success, and if more members uh, from the project want more funding to go to the LTS, we might be able to do two LTS simultaneously, which means we can extend the first one. But this is all things that we, we deferred for later. So we wanted to put the process, a good process for LTS. And then, I mean, we'll see, I mean, what the feedback is and, and how to deal with the next LTS. But two years is what we set. On the goal. Uh, feedback, Pitch, you ask for feedback, uh, mailing list, or just talk to Richard, talk to me, talk to Armin, any of us should be able to just relay the feedback. Um, but but something on. Yeah, something on the mailing list or sort of if it's a, if it's sent to one of us in email or something like that, we just need to be able to show that there are people using it and how. Um, that really does help us so yeah any way we can show the support we also put a page on the wiki trying to show which projects are using the yocto project and i think adding something about lts support in there could also be good but yeah any way we can show where the project's being used and why it's important really does help us immensely um, okay and i think this is it. Uh, so this is the end of the buff. And again, there are many ways for everyone to just join and talk to any of us. Uh, the Slack channel, the IRC, the mailing list, Yocto project slash community, and you will find all the details to join us. And there are a few presentations during the week, this week at the event. And there is a Yocto project summit at the end of the week, which is a dedicated event to, to the Yocto project and open embedded. So. Thanks again, uh, everyone, for 
being with us today and I hope you will have a good uh, rest of the conference. Thank you.